hello everybody. Uh, I'm Amardo Troisi, and uh, you know, I'll get the kind of obvious thing out of the way first. It's kind of like the title of this presentation. I've gotten into trouble a couple times with this. And really, uh, where it comes from is me and the lead level designer actually have uh, a really great rapport. And uh, a lot of the times, you know, we'll come to uh, disagreements about, you know, gameplay and story and, and all these wonderful things. Uh, so, you know, a lot of times I'll just kind of kick my desk and like, you know, get your game out of my movie, right? And, and uh, it's kind of where the title comes from. But really, I think it kind of encapsulates uh, where the industry is uh, in, uh, when you talk about story and gameplay and uh, what that push-pull relationship is between the two. And a lot of what we're trying to focus on here is how we're actually trying to merge the two and try to make storytelling in video games something new and exciting. So firstly, who am I? Well, uh, like I said, I'm Armando Teresi. I'm the lead cinematic designer. And a lot of people go, uh, you know, what is a cinematic designer? We really haven't heard of this uh, title before. But really, uh, you know, if you look at other companies, we're really narrative designers. Uh, we're cinematic artists, but we're always, we're always a narrative designer first, which means that story always comes first before everything. It trumps animation, it trumps camera, it, can't, it trumps cool shots and all this kind of crazy stuff. Uh, one of the things at Bioware is we tried to create the best story-driven games in the world, and a focus on narrative and story and emotion is uh, what gets us there. Um, also, it's uh, interactive narrative, and what we deal with is the how-to of storytelling. So you always have the, the writers and, um, and their great ideas and they'll come up with these crazy scripts, but they rely on the cinematic designer to make it real. So we're, we're virtually like interactive directors, really, uh, where we work with the writers to make these um, interactive uh, cinematics uh, come to life. So what are we really talking about here? Um, we're going to be talking a about a couple things today. Firstly, we're going to be talking about story perspective. And anybody who's a writer or has been involved in narrative design understands that story perspective is just a huge part of how people consume a story. And when you add the player to the mix, it actually becomes really complicated uh, as opposed to a film or a television show. So we're going to be talking about story perspective and how we deal with that at Bioware. The next thing is we're going to talk about uh, this concept of the agreement. And the agreement is really the, for, the core focus of this talk. And it's a covenant that we make with the player to guide them in this interactive story experience. So we're going to be covering a lot of those points and looking at a lot of examples of the agreement. And, you know, we all know what they are. Uh, some of us hate them, some of us love them, but we're going to be talking about quick time events in, in uh, cinematics. And, uh, in Mass Effect 2, we added the interrupt system, which is basically a quick time event system, and how we merged that into our agreement and uh, still made it a very visceral, very cool experience while still maintaining the expectations of the player. And hopefully we'll have some time for Q&A. So um, there's the agenda, and let's roll right into it. So when we talk about Bioware design, we talk about these four pillars, and these four pillars are kind of set to us from Ray and Greg. And they say, OK, this is exactly what the makeup of a Bioware game is. So when we look at that, we look at story, exploration, progression, and gameplay. And we move the player through these activities in a, in a system we call activity chaining. So you'll do some exploration, you'll do some combat, you'll do some progression, you'll get some story. And you know, we keep changing things up, trying to make things fresh. But these are kind of the, the building blocks of a, of a modern RPG. So what we're going to be looking at today is story and how we bring different elements into story and how we integrate story into gameplay. So when we talk about story in Mass Effect, uh, this is our product. It's an uh, interactive cinematic, uh, better known as a conversation, uh, but it is um, you know, a, a virtually a, a cutscene that you get to control and influence. So when we talk about the conversation, we're talking about a couple of different things. Because uh, when you, even in our studio, we get, you know, when we say conversation, we mean so many things. Um, but really, uh, it, it means three, basically three different things. First of all, it's a narrative tool. It's the primary way in which we convey story to the player. It's a game system. Uh, so a lot of people who uh, attended my talk yesterday at VFS uh, saw like the more systems design oriented 
um, approach we take to cinematics. And it's also a philosophy. Uh, and it's always evolving, and it's always changing, and it's always, it's always getting refined. And this idea of the conversation actually goes all the way back to Baldur's Gate. So we're talking about 15 years of this philosophy evolving and uh, what the pitfalls were uh, of that design and how we progressed that. So big, ugly dialogue trees. Um, this is like, you know, uh, the core of how we design narrative at Bioware. If you look at any of our games, all the way back to Baldur's Gate and all the way up to the brand new Star Wars MMO, they all use a dialogue tree system. Um, and dialogue trees aren't new to RPGs. You know, there's tons of examples of games that use the same system. But if you look really, really closely at a dialogue tree, and especially a Bioware dialogue tree, you see one thing that uh, really kind of stands out. And that's the idea of choice. And choice is the idea of we're adding interactivity into the cinematic space. We're letting the player have the story they want and we're allowing them to experience uh, the game in any way they choose. So uh, for us at Bioware, and especially for me, um, I really hold choice to be like the ultimate sort of aspiration of, of where we, how we separate games from, let's say, mediums like film, television, books, or whatever. Um, it'll, and and what's make, it, it's what makes our um, medium very unique. So, Let's talk about perspective for a second. So when we look at perspective, we're talking about a couple of things. We're talking about the point of view uh, that the player interacts with the story. So when we talk about perspective in a video game, it's what's the perspective of the player? So at Bioware, it kind of falls into two different camps, the subjective and the objective. So when we talk about subjective, we see a long history of games that use this type of storytelling technique, all the way up until Dragon Age, actually. And a lot of people who are traditional role players will understand this right away. It's uh, basically a traditional computer role playing model. It's, you, it's the idea that you are the avatar. This is, it, it, you're, look, you're experiencing the world, um, the avatar is you um, type of thing. Uh, dialogue responses are always verbatim. Uh, you know exactly what you're going to say. You have uninterrupted agency over your character. Everything your character does is a direct result of the player inputting into the system. Uh, it has some really great benefits, and it's the reason why. Uh, a lot of people actually call this the Gordon Freeman effect, uh, but it allows you to quickly empathize with the avatar. You can quickly look at the world through their eyes and experience things as they experience them and really get into the character. But there's also some problems with it. And when we talk about the cinematic quality of, of the subjective story, there's, a, there's some temporal distortions that occur. And as also as a side effect, there's also an enormous amount of dialogue that needs to happen because basically one person is holding up the entire conversation. It's you make a choice and your player doesn't say anything, but the NPC has to you know, talk for God knows how long in order to get the exposition out. Um, and that's kind of an, a side effect of, of uh, that design choice. So we're going to be looking at an example of subjective story, and we're going to go all the way back to Knights of the Old Republic, and we're going to be looking at uh, a, a dialogue clip from that game. Back again? Is there something old Garouk can do for you? Or did you just come to chat with a lonely old man? Of course, of course. My mind isn't as sharp as it used to be. That's why I'm giving up the gambler's life. But I think I can still manage to answer some simple questions. So what we saw there was two types of temporal distortion that happened. One is time stopped as the player contemplated their next choice. And the other was when the player made a choice, time sped up or we missed time as he said his line, and the other person heard it. But as a player, we didn't hear it. So this is kind of the problem that we were trying to solve with the Mass Effect franchise, is how do we eliminate these temporal distortions in order to get drama and conflict into these scenes? Uh, we're going to be looking at objective story. So uh, basically, when we talk about objective story, we're talking about the counter to this uh, traditional role-playing model. And this is obviously the, this is the model we use for, for Mass Effect and uh, Knights of the Old Republic. So 
So in this, in this model, uh, you are not the avatar. So when we talk about with the Mass Effect model, we're actually talking to a character that's closer to Kratos than to the avatar in Dragon Age. The avatar has his own voice and motivation. So Shepard has his own, you know, he knows what he needs to do. Um, he has his own voice. You can hear him talk. Uh, so he is a character in the game as opposed to being a, a projection of the player in the, in the game world. And that actually makes the player slightly voyeuristic. Uh, it allows us to take on a more filmic sort of presence in the game where the player is now detached from the play experience uh, that we're trying to create. So this actually did a lot of cool things for us, and it removed a lot of temporal distortions. Uh, it, it, added, it, it allowed us to add real-time narrative uh, environment and really allowed us to do this really breakthrough sort of storytelling uh, in an RPG that we had uh, for Mass Effect. And this was actually one of the big innovations that we had. So now we're going to look at a clip of Mass Effect uh, where we're going to see this, this objective storytelling uh, take place. <laughs> 